Hi, I'm Emma. I'm a certified Dubsado specialist, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to add your custom fonts into your Dubsado form, specifically in the new Dubsado form builder. Um, before we get started, I just want to talk a bit about adding custom fonts. It's great to add your custom fonts into your Dubsado form. It's a great way to standardize and match your branding between your forms and your website, your social media, or any other marketing you know, tools that you're using. What I'm starting to see more and more is people wanting to add their custom fonts to every little bit of text inside of their form. Like where the person answers, um, the submit button, where the proposal navigation tab, like every little piece of font, they want to customize it to their brand fonts. And if you know how to do it and it's easy for you, great, you know, that's fine. But what I'm finding and what I'm seeing in a lot of online forums is that people are getting stuck. And this is what I just want to say about this. If it's not easy for you to customize these fonts, if you're spending too much time, just don't move on because the reality of it is, is that changing those little bits of fonts is not going to move the needle. It's not going to create a better client experience. Your clients probably won't even notice. And it's just taking a lot of your time and energy away from other tasks that you could be doing in your business that might be tasks that move the needle more. I mean, tasks that might generate more sales, more conversions for your business. So if it's difficult for you to customize those fonts, if you're getting stuck, if you're spending hours upon hours trying to figure this out, my advice is just move on and leave those fonts as the default fonts inside of Dubsado. So now that I've said all that, let's get started. So the first step in adding your custom fonts into your Dubsado form is to host your font somewhere. Dubsado cannot host font files for you, so you need to do it um, ideally on your website. If you are using custom fonts in your website, you may be able to find them in your source code, um, or you can look inside of the media library of your website builder. So what do I mean by that? I don't have any custom fonts in my website, but if you did, you can go here to view page source. So you look at this code and you go control F to search and you can look for TTF, which is a type of font file. I don't have it, right? So, or WOFF, right? I don't have it. So, but if you did, it would highlight where that, um, it would be something like this, like a URL over here, and it would have a dot WOFF or WTTF uh, at the end of the URL, so you would just select that and that would be your font URL. And that's, you're gonna save that somewhere because that's what you're gonna use inside of Dubsado. If you do need to add your custom fonts to your website builder, this is how you would do it for Squarespace. So in your Squarespace account or on the site that you wanna add the custom font to, you're gonna go to design and click custom CSS. Depending on what Squarespace account you have, like which tier, you may have access to custom CSS or not. So just keep that in mind. So you're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and click manage custom files. And there you can add your custom font. And once you've added the font, then all you have to do is click on the file and then you'll see that it adds the link, the URL for that file, which is what you need in Dubsado. So I'm just gonna cut it out of there and I'm going to click Save, and then you're just going to save that URL to use inside of your Dubsado form. If you're using Google Fonts, you don't need to host the font files on your website. You can just gather the font URL directly from Google. So you just have to go to fonts.google.com and find the font that you want to use. So in this case, I want to use this one. So I'm going to scroll down I click on it. I scroll down and in this case, I only have one option. So I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to go and grab another one that I need. So it's Franklin. And in this case, you see there are a lot more options. So there's really thin ones. It gets a little heavier. Um, you have a different code for the italic. Um, so it goes all the way to like super heavy, like a bolded. So I'm just going to grab this one here. And then once you've gathered the ones that you want to use, you just go here to click uh, view selected families. And you see that there's a code here. You're just going to click import because that's what you need. 
and you're going to gather these uh, pieces of this this code right here. You don't need the style portion of it. So now that I have all the fonts, all the URLs for the fonts that I want to use, I can come to my Dubsado form. So I'm just going to use a sample form in this case. And you're going to go to form styling and click edit CSS. I'm just going to move myself over to the side. And now you just need to start adding those URLs into Dubsado so that it understands what fonts you want to use. So this is the code for the font that is hosted on my site. Okay, it has the URL here of the TTF file. Ideally, you would do this for more than just the TTF file. You would host the TTF, the WFF, and the WFF2 if you can, as many as possible, just so that if one doesn't work on one browser, it has a fallback. Okay, so that's the code for the font hosted on your site. Now I've added the code for the Google fonts. So you can see one is the Franklin and one is the Marcellus font that we looked at earlier on the Google, on the fonts.google.com site. So this is how you're letting Dubsado know what fonts you're using, um, like what fonts you're kind of bringing into Dubsado to now tell Dubsado where you want to use each one. One thing to point out is that I haven't styled any of the fonts in this form so far. So I've just added the text and I, if you can see, it's just like this gray color. Some of it's black, some of it's kind of grayish, like dark gray. Um, and it's all the default font that Dubsada uses in its forms, which is Proxima Nova. Um, what I have done and I want to point out is if I go into this text box and I select this and I go to formatting options, you can see that I've selected heading two. So I've gone ahead and told Zipsado that I want this piece of text to be heading two, this one to be heading one. So I've told this to be heading one, this to be just paragraph font. Um, and so on and so forth. So I haven't styled it in the sense that I haven't added colors and I haven't assigned like types of fonts. Um, I'll let the code do that, but I have told Dubsado where I want H1, H2, H3, H4, and paragraph fonts to be um, placed, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the CSS code and use those fonts that we've brought into Dubsado and tell Dubsado where I want each one to be used. So in your custom CSS, you can see we have the Google fonts at the top and then the uh, custom fonts that are hosted on your website below. So I swapped the spots uh, from before, like just so you know, it's better to put like Google fonts won't work if they're below the custom fonts, uh, just something that I noticed. Um, I am going to add the code for H1, okay? So you can see it says dubsado dash form h1 and I'm telling it that I want it to be Marcellus, which is one of the Google fonts that I have. It's a serif font and I assign the weight. So let's go at the top and now you can see that this font immediately changed when I added that. Let me remove it and now I add it again and you can see it immediately changes because this is h1. Um, Font weight basically tells you how heavy your font is. Like, is it thin? Is it bold? So if I change this to 800, it gets bolded. So you can play around with these numbers to find what works best for you. The color, you can add any hex code from your brand, from your branding. Um, and the font size here, you can also play around with it. Um, it's quite sensitive in this, uh, in this unit. So like six is huge. Three, you can add a decimal point, so 3.4, let's say. So I'm just going to leave it as three, but you can play around until you find what works. So the beauty of having assigned the fonts as H1, H2, and so on before I added the code is that as I add the code into this box here, you'll uh, immediately see the changes in your form. So you can make those tweaks. Um, and find the style that fits you best. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of them, okay? Um, H2, H3, H4, and the paragraph font. So I have them separately. I'm just going to paste them in. So you can see 
that the code is basically the same. So dubsado-form, now it's h2 instead of h1. And in this case, I ass assigned the Libre Franklin font, which is a sans serif font, which is what's showing up here. And then uh, h3 is a Marcellus. I gave this one a color. I added this option, which is text transform, so you can make it uppercase, um, all lowercase, like you can assign these types of things. Uh, if you look at um, different pages that have CSS code, that teach CSS code, you'll be able to see what different options are available to you. Um, H4 is the Sandcastle font, which is a script font. And then the paragraph font here, um, I've also assigned. So if I go through this form, you'll see the different places, like it's all different now. See, this is all uppercase. And it's this color here, which matches the background. Um, so, and this is that script font. So one thing for you to know is that even though you've assigned the fonts in this way, you can go in here and change it. Like if you don't want it, you can make it um, this font in Dubsado. So you're not necessarily tied to that font. It's just an easier way to assign a lot of fonts in different parts of your form all at once. But if you wanted to change like, I don't know, the font is too small for this particular part of your form, you can go highlight that piece of text and change it and style it as you want. So this is how you assign your H1, H2, H3, H4 and paragraph fonts inside of your form. So I know I talked earlier about changing fonts and all the little parts of your form. Again, I don't believe that it moves the needle, but if you are determined to do that, I'll show you how just to save you some time and uh, just to make it easier for you. You're going to need to go to this page. So this page has the CSS cheat sheets for Dubsado. Here you'll see the code that we used in the form already. And below it is the code that you'll need for all the other different parts of your form. So let's say you wanted to change the font of the navigation bar of your proposal. So let's scroll down and here it says proposal navigation tab. So I think it's this one. This is the tricky part here. You may change it and find that it didn't work. So you have to figure out, did you insert the code wrong or was it this one that you should have used? So you might have to play around. So it takes a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna copy this I'm going to come over to the code again. I'm just going to leave this piece of code here. Oh, it's missing the dash. So this was not grayed out. That's just text. So um, it's just letting me know what the code below it is for. So if you noticed here, it was like that. That would have given me an error. So I'm just going to save this and preview it to show you what the font looks like right now. So that's the default font in Dubsado. So what I want to do is I want to use the same paragraph font in that proposal tab. I'm going to remove this option of line height because that's for paragraphs just to keep text like uh, the lines far apart, farther apart from each other. Um, so I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to save it and I'm going to preview it. So you can see that this font is different now. It looks more like this one here. And that's how you add custom fonts to your Dubsado form. I um, hope this has been helpful for you and you can save time by following these steps. If you need help with your Dubsado proposals, you can download my free proposal template. The link is below. It'll save you loads of time as you're starting out in Dubsado. If you need support with your Dubsado setup and you want an expert to help you, feel free to book a call with me and we can talk about where you're struggling and what help you need and we can see if a Dubsado setup is the right fit for your business. See you next time.